So explain Godel's theorem. Okay. So um, back in the early 20th century, um, there was a, a, an optimism in mathematics that we were closing in on a complete mathematical theory of everything, okay? And, uh, and it, that movement is generally called positivism, okay? Now, um, let me kind of explain what they were about. I have here a high school geometry book. And anybody that's taken high school geometry book knows, okay, you get all these triangles and lines and parallel lines and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, and so there, you know, there's all this stuff you can study in this biology book. Well, the, the, this entire biology book rests geometry. on, yeah. sorry, the, the entire geometry book rests on five theorems called Euclid's postulates, okay? Things like, for example, one of them is a line segment can be extended indefinitely both directions. It's like that's one of the theorems. But you got Euclid's five postulates. Now, here's the thing. Mathematicians have always been frustrated they couldn't prove the five postulates. They make sense, they're coherent, they're obviously intuitively true. They can't prove them. So in the early 20th century, there's a whole bunch of mathematicians that believe that we're going to get to a point where we can prove everything in mathematics, and it's all going to be a closed circle, and it's always going to be neat. And, and once we get there, boy, watch out, world, because we're, we can really go somewhere. Yeah, Everything will be understood. Everything will be understood. It's kind of the mathematical theory of everything. Mm -hmm. Kurt Gödel was this uh, Austrian uh, mathematician, and he proved that you'll never achieve that. It was Gödel's incompleteness theorem. He proved that any I'm going to explain Gödel's theorem in uh, in layman's terms. Yeah. Okay. So here's. Here's my high school geometry book, okay? And it's got all of these uh, rules and things in it. Let's say I draw a circle around this geometry book. This geometry book relies on something outside of the circle that you cannot prove but you have to assume. And Goodell proved that every system is like this. Every system that you can draw a circle around yes. depends on something outside of the circle. Which you have, which you have to assume, yeah. but it's which not, you cannot, cannot prove. prove. Okay. okay? So what that means is there's always more things that are true than you can prove. And it means that any system of logic or any system of belief, any system of reasoning requires faith. Mm -hmm. Something's unproven. Faith is something unproven. Yeah. And the way he did this was he took the, he took the liar's paradox, which is... I am lying. Mm -hmm. And he turned it into a mathematical formula and he said, can I use this mathematical formula to prove whether I'm lying or not? Okay, and what Goodell proved was only a person independent of the liar can judge whether he's lying or not. Mm -hmm. He cannot, he cannot tell within and uh, uh, he cannot prove within himself that he's telling the truth mm -hmm. okay and this was a devastating blow to a whole bunch of mathematicians mm -hmm. some of them some of them died still in denial like this has to somehow be wrong got but, you but it was it was absolutely brilliant and so he he proved that there's always things that you there's more things that are true than what you can improve, and that 
that what, whatever, any way that you draw this, even if we draw a bigger circle to now encompass this, we will still then refer to something else outside of that circle. In this example, that means if we were able to prove the five postulates, by in, in the process of doing so, Godel would say, there'll be something still. Yes. In our proofs that forces us to make assumptions. Yes. Okay. And I think this is one of the most important things that anybody's come up with, like literally in the last 2,000 years. And again, years. this is no longer open for debate. His, no, this no. This is solid math. No, it, it was this. case closed in 1931 right. when Goodell wrote his paper right. because his, his logic is absolutely flawless. Yeah. Okay? And it's, it's, it's like, whoa. Major, major implications for that. Major implications. Right. It has implications for mathematics. It has implications for philosophy. It has implications for science. And frankly, it has implications for religion. Mm -hmm. Okay, because so let's let's um, let's do a little experiment here. Okay, let's say that instead of talking about a geometry book, we're talking about the universe. Mm -hmm. The universe is contingent on something outside the circle which you have to assume, but you cannot prove. Mm -hmm. Okay? There is something outside the universe. Mm -hmm. And we can define universe as everything physical, everything that you can see, taste, feel, or touch, everything with mass or energy. You can put all that in the circle. There has to be something outside the circle. Now, would that, con would that be debated in scientific circles? That point? I don't think it's possible. Well, people can disagree with it, but it's Goodell's theorem applies to everything. Right. Right. It does. So there's different ideas being thrown around. The multiverse. Right. Okay. Right, Multiverse. Something. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of universes. Right. <laughs> we can still draw a circle around them. That's the point. Right? And there still has to be something outside the circle. Right. Now, we can start we can go we can go further. We can infer what is outside the circle. By looking at inside? Yes. OK. Because everything, in, OK, if, 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 if inside the circle we have matter, energy, space, and time, that means whatever is outside the circle is not matter, energy, space, and time. It's immaterial. It's not energy. It's not space. And it's outside of time. Mm -hmm. OK? And here's if, the, if those things are completely encompassed, that is, inside. I mean, you could envision in, the, in, our, in our physical world encompassing these things yes. in a circle. But the, they're assuming matter, energy, space, and time outside of the circle. But, but if all of matter, right. you're saying, I think that's what you're trying to say. Yeah. All of energy, all of space, and all of time is encompassed in the universe, which is the definition of the universe, right. then this right. must not be matter, matter, energy, space, or time. And even yeah. in a thought experiment, yeah. in stating the universe, we can define the circle as all universes. Right. OK, that there is something outside the circle is not matter, not energy, not space, not time. Right. Also. Systems, okay?